Okay, next up we have the UML component diagram. And as discussed, component diagrams are extremely useful because they are really good to describe the system in a very concise, very kind of easy, abstract way without going into too much details. But first up, we need to ask ourselves, what is a component? Because we use this word a lot and uh, it's good to know what it actually means. So it is obviously some kind of unit of composition. So we somehow break down our system into uh, components and then compose it together. I've mentioned that before, that for example, in the reuse-based process, we would like to take existing components and put them together. So it's some kind of way of composing your system or part of it. Uh, what they have is, they need to have specified dependencies. Dependencies. So you somehow need to have kind of, it's usually called a contract, a way of describing this is what the component needs. For example, a component that draws something on your screen like a graphical user interface might depend on certain uh, libraries for doing so and that needs to be defined uh, so that whoever wants to take this unit of composition and put it into their system, they can uh, reason about what else do we need to run this. So that's really important, the specified dependencies, which is called the interface or the interfaces. You can have multiple of those. And finally, uh, what we can do is we can independently uh, deploy these. Let's see, independently deployable. So that means they each run sort of as an individual application uh, and then communicate with other components over different protocols. Uh, but that means they can be running on different computers, they can be running in different platforms like on Windows or Mac. They can use different programming languages. So you can have one component that is written in Python, you can have one that runs on the Java or JavaScript or something else. And that makes this uh, a very powerful tool, a, a component, because you can really build systems on, based on a lot of different technologies and that's good if, for example, you have different companies that use different technology, like one is programming in Python, one is programming in Java, uh, or even within the same company, you can basically leave it up to the teams to say, this is your component, use whatever technology uh, fits you best. So that's why this is a really good way of breaking down your system and reducing the complexity. Now, how do we describe this in UML? Uh, we have the component diagram and there we have components. They look like classes, it's a box. Now my pen is giving up. So we have components. For example, let's say we have the client. It's one component. They have this component stereotype, so the double quotation marks, the angled one component and then the name, client, and then let's say we have a server. We don't go into details on what exactly they do. So we have another component, server, just boxes, and they should communicate. So what is about the dependencies? And here we use often what is called the lollipop notation. What we have here is the filled thing, that's why it's called lollipop. The server is providing something, is offering something. So this is a way of saying the server has some kind of functionality that someone else can use and the client is requiring this functionality, it depends on it. So this is the dependency that we are specifying, saying the client cannot run reasonably without the server. The server does not have any dependencies, so it's fine. Uh, the client needs some and then you write here that we are using this. So again, two angled brackets and use, whereas this is the provides statement. And then you can add a name here. You can, for example, say this is I server funct. 
That's just the name of our interface, so interface server functions or something. That's just the name we assign uh, that the interface is called. We could have more of those, so the client could depend on something else. The server could depend on something. For example, maybe the server needs to have some kind of database connection. Then we could specify that as IDB or something. And we don't have to continue here, but you could imagine that then there's a database that provides this functionality and so on. So this is a way, each of these could be extremely complicated, but it's a very easy way to say we have these two components and that's how they are connected. Um, what you see very often here, I'm, I've been drawing the, the lollipops separated, but what you very often see is that people connect them. So they say, well, if, if this is how our system looks like, we just draw it like this. So they are connected, that's how our system is deployed. Uh, and by writing use here, we know that the client is the one that is using, that is requiring it and the server is providing it. So that's something you see very often. There is another view that is uh, the actual full notation and for completeness, I want to mention that as well, especially because it can be helpful to, to be specific there. You can describe in detail what your interface looks like. And for that, uh, let's use this name, iServerFunct. And what we have here is an interface that's something you might have already seen in the class diagram because there you can use these as well. So it again looks like a class and it doesn't have any attributes because interfaces are abstract and they don't define any attributes, but they define a method signature, they define operations. So you could, for example, say log in and, I don't know, get posts. And then instead of this notation, what we can do is like this. So we have an arrow, a dashed arrow with an open arrowhead and we have a dashed arrow with an empty closed arrow hat. And this means this one is using this interface, this one is providing it or implementing it. So this is the long, the explicit version of the small thing here. And the advantage is, of course, we are seeing exactly what is in that interface. What kind of methods do we need to implement on the server? And what kind of methods is the client trying to call? So this is somehow the more explicit version compared to this. Uh, that's the original UML notation. This is the short version that is typically used in a lot of systems because it's much more readable. Uh, but if you need to know the details on the interface, of course, you somehow need to have this somewhere. Um, so that is the uh, UML component diagram. That's all I want to talk about because it is really not much more complicated. There are some more things you can add there. There is, for example, something that's called a port, uh, but we're not going there. So this is usually enough to understand uh, what a system is composed of and it's enough to describe your system on a very high level. So I have, for example, seen these diagrams uh, when I did evaluations for government contracts when the suppliers needed to describe how their system looks like and how it relates to other systems, what kind of dependencies it has. Then it's a very good way of describing your system without going into all the details, but enough for me as an external person to understand what the system is roughly composed of. So very common and we'll definitely see them again when we get to the software architecture part of this course.